These creators have the 10 worst reputations in YouTube history, and coming in at number 10 is YouTube prankster Vitaly ZDTV. Once one of the platform's most respected creators, Vitaly's reputation began to decline after confessing in a rant video that some of his most popular pranks had been faked. Out of 165 videos, I maybe faked five videos. However, despite Vitaly stating that he'd only faked five videos, a different YouTube prankster, FoozyTube, would respond to the video by stating that Vitaly had staged more than that, resulting in another response from Vitaly, in which he'd once again admit that his videos were in fact fake. Everybody knows that we faked pranks back in the day. Yes, I faked some of my videos. Adding to Vitaly's reputation on decline was both the launch of Vitaly Uncensored, as well as the time he'd get in hot water for climbing one of Egypt's great pyramids, although the event which would notoriously ruin his reputation beyond repair was the time he was arrested in Miami. On the 12th of April 2020, Vitaly attacked a random woman who was simply jogging past the front of Vitaly's house, and when the police body cam footage of the arrest was released, it was obvious that Vitaly was incredibly intoxicated. After spending the night in jail, Vitaly was sued by the woman for an undisclosed amount, and while Vitaly seems to have made somewhat of a redemption judging from recent podcast appearances, the same can't be said for the YouTube with the ninth worst reputation, NNA Productions. The reputation of NNA Productions began to decline when Penguin Zero would state that NNA was the worst YouTuber on the entire website, with the initial criticism being that NNA simply made awful generic fake 3M challenges that were targeted toward children. This channel's name is NNA Productions, and it's so generic it makes Nickelback look like rock and roll pioneers. He makes the exact same video every single time except the very end where he changes the scare. Penguin Zero would then go on to explain that NNA Productions takes advantage of his young naive audience by hosting a fake giveaway in the beginning of every video. You're not allowed to host fake giveaways. It's an actual felony to do that. So what he's doing is breaking the law because there's no winners for these giveaways. So he's breaking a law and he is also breaking a YouTube rule but for some reason he's done this in every single video and he has still not had his channel taken down yet, which is bundled with the promotion of his social media and repeated identically in every single episode. The first three minutes of every single one of his videos is basically just an advertisement for all of his social media and scams. Following Penguin Zero talking about NNA Productions, Diesel Patches, Pancho, and DJ Cook would each upload their own viral videos, also talking about how terrible he was. Calling Cars 3. Cars 3 is a movie. How can you call a movie? With one of the other criticisms being that he made a 3am video on Etika right after he passed away. He actually went ahead and did an Etika 3am challenge. Rest in peace, Etika, right guys? And one like equals one prayer for Etika. And with such, the entire internet, including his own comment bots, joined in on the NNA Productions hate train. However, around two years after Penguin Zero uploaded his initial video, calling him the worst YouTuber on the platform, Charlie changed his mind by calling him the most impressive YouTuber for his consistency in being able to pump out so much terrible content for such a long period of time. It is wrapped around from being the worst YouTuber to the strongest, most persistent YouTuber I've ever seen in my life. And speaking of terrible content for a long period of time, this seems like an appropriate point to talk about number 8, Wings of Redemption. After becoming one of YouTube's most notorious Call of Duty players back in the early 2010s, Wings of Redemption's reputation began to decline after he'd lose a 1v1 match against another large Call of Duty YouTuber named Syndicate. In the lead up to the 1v1, Wings had been going on about how bad Syndicate was and how there was no way Wings could possibly lose the match, yet when the show down eventually happened, Syndicate beat Wings 14 kills to 9 in front of an audience of 7,000, and Wings of Redemption completely lost it. I broke my controller. You broke your controller? <laughs> <laughs> this match would act as a catalyst for Wings to gain approximately 100 pounds, alienate his only few friends, and eventually cultivate an army of trolls who would do nothing but berate him in every single live stream. The constant harassment by his audience led to a pinnacle when, after being stream sniped for an entire live stream, Wings would once again lose it in front of his audience. Can't do it. I can't take this shit no more, man. As these reactions became increasingly common during his streams, entire YouTube channels became dedicated to posting Wings of Redemption's worst moments, which not only brought more trolls to each stream, but these videos made it next to impossible for Wings to get a job or do anything outside of streaming to an audience who were essentially just watching so they could laugh at him. However, there were still less people laughing at Wings in comparison to the creator with the seventh worst reputation, Nikocado Avocado. After gaining a following as one of the platform's first male vegan mukbang YouTubers, Nikocado
Ricardo Avocado's level of discipline began to slip. Rather than eating healthy vegan food for the camera, he began to consume more and more fast food, likely due to its speedy delivery, cheap cost, and overwhelming relatability to the audience. However, eating fast food every single day in order to produce a video came alongside a massive increase in body weight. As time progressed, Nick Ricardo only got larger and larger, to the point where people weren't even watching for the mukbang, but rather to see Nick Ricardo Avocado eat himself to death. Accompanying his weight gain was the decline of his relationship and sex life. However, the thing that put the biggest dent in his reputation was that he used all of these negative elements as a way to gain views. Celebrating our 700 pound milestone, McDonald's mukbang, my new diet as a disabled person, how much weight I've gained, fast food mukbang, with each of these videos having negative comment after negative comment about Nick Ricardo monetizing the collapse of his life. However, while Nick Ricardo's food related content has generated a pretty equal mix of both fans and haters, the same can't be said for the person with the sixth worst reputation, that vegan teacher. In the beginning, the vegan teacher's content was mild, fun, and entertaining. However, after she'd blow up from a back and forth between her and Gordon Ramsay, her strategy switched to calling out any and every influencer with the goal of receiving a response. If you're not vegan, I'm coming after you. She'd call out Coco Melon for using cheese in one of their music videos. Guys, you cannot be promoting cheese to children. Cheese is like a poison, and it comes from a cycle of violence. You forgot to say vegan cheese. Mr. Beast for not using vegan lollies in his chocolate factory video. I wonder if all of those candies are vegan. I hope so, because gelatin comes from violence. And Darman for not using vegan hot dogs in his YouTube sketch. No, he didn't say vegan hot dog. That's not good. As a result of these outrageous just claims against some of YouTube's most beloved creators, the vegan teacher became one of the main punching bags for the commentary community, and subsequently it became a trend for the wider YouTube audience to hate on her. The fact that people are actually supporting this lady and subscribe to this lady is tragic. This is another level of insanity. It's so hard to think that this whole channel isn't satire. The fact that she is still on social media till this day for absolutely no reason, just to harass people for not being vegan, makes me mad. The vegan teacher's poor reputation is best summarized by the brutal dislike ratios on almost every every single video posted to her channel, yet in comparison to the creator with the fifth worst reputation, the vegan teacher still looks like a saint. In fact, the next person has a reputation so terrible that it's not even possible to find a single positive comment on any of their videos, no matter how deeply you look. The most toxic YouTuber I've ever stumbled across. I cannot believe that this is a real thing. And it's a YouTuber going by the name of Lisa Gaming Roblox. She first blew up by posting a video of her deleting other Roblox players' houses, but with 4 million views on an incredibly toxic first video came an indescribable level of backlash. This is literally unforgivable considering how much time the people spent making the house, and then there is a person who just destroys it all. However, the impressive performance of the video revealed one thing to Lisa. Toxicity equals attention. The very next video posted to the channel was therefore another toxic video, in which Lisa would make up fake allegations about another large Roblox YouTuber, and subsequently the entire channel devolved into a cesspool of unsavory content. Every single comment on every single video follows a similar structure along the lines of, this is how many people want Lisa to be banned from Bloxburg, people who dislike her vids, everyone who's happy to see Lisa getting hated on. However, instead of trying to repair her reputation, Lisa simply plays into it by creating countless videos reading these hate comments, which only leads to more hate. However, she's still not nearly as hated as the creator with the fourth worst reputation Darkseid Phil, who's so hated that his vlog channel is literally titled The King of Hate. Darkseid Phil began as a professional player on the game Street Fighter back in the mid-2000s, where he became hated by the community for his disrespectful attitude toward other players. You got some idiot named DSP who's a total piece of shit, by the way. This was followed by Phil joining YouTube in 2007, on which he'd become one of the first people to upload Let's Play style videos. However, uploading full game playthroughs came with its own set of problems. With so many hours of footage posted to Phil's channel, a user by the name of EvilAJ2010 compiled all of Phil's worst moments on the game Metal Gear Solid before uploading them as a video titled This Is How You Don't Play MGS2. Phil wasn't too happy with this, so he'd respond to the video, but this only prompted more compilations by other creators, each of which prefixed with the title This Is How You Don't Play. These videos not only led to the initial decline in Phil's reputation, but then also lead to a collapse in his viewership at a time when Phil was becoming desperate for money so he could pay his bills. In 2020, 
will be discovered that Phil was over $500,000 in debt, causing him to file for bankruptcy. Yet when the bankruptcy documents were leaked, it became apparent that Phil had not been spending the donation money on bills and instead had maxed out 13 credit cards and spent over $40,000 on a mobile game called WWE Legends, with a document showing that Phil had been spending more money on the game than he had been on his mortgage. Just to put a cherry on top of the cake, Phil was also caught beating off on stream whilst not realizing that he was live, and while the camera was only focused on his face, his reaction is still hilarious. Oh, the camera's on. The camera's been on the whole time, huh? I don't even know. However, if we're on the topic of being caught in 4K, then this might be the perfect time to talk about the creator with the third worst reputation, EDP445. He was once a creator held in high regard for his honesty and unfiltered attitude whilst on camera. However, all of this changed on the 18th of April, 2021, when he tried to meet up with a minor after chatting with her online. Turns out the account was a decoy created by two other YouTubers who captured the whole interaction on camera. And after other creators like Penguin Zero publicized the footage to an audience of over 30, 13 million, EDP's public image collapsed overnight. He'd lose 200,000 subscribers in a week. Then seven days later, YouTube would delete his channel altogether. His cameo, Facebook, and Instagram were also deleted, leading him to migrate to other niche video sharing websites such as 3Speak, on which he'd also eventually get banned. EDP attempted to get a job driving for Lyft, Uber Eats, and Grubhub. However, he'd also be fired from all three of these positions, after which he would apply to have his name changed as a desperate attempt to escape from the controversy. He'd then move to a completely different city where he began to live out of various hotels. However, he was continually evicted as a result of people calling each hotel to let them know what EDP had done. And while EDP is essentially now living in exile from both the internet and the real world, he's not the only person on this list in such a position. Maximilian Muss, the YouTuber with the second worst reputation, also fits into this category of exiled YouTubers. You probably remember him as the guy who made the Oh Yeah Yeah Fortnite song before getting everyone in his audience to clone his profile picture and comment Oh Yeah Yeah on other creators' videos. Well, this wasn't the only thing that Max was getting his audience to do. Everyone, go to this live stream, type we strayed, we gang, and say homophobic stuff and spam and be racist and sexist and mean and also Max gang. The reason why he had them saying we gang is because that's a YouTuber that he didn't like, so he wanted to make it sound like all of the homophobic and racist shit was coming from that guy's community, hoping he'd get banned for it. He did this for other streamers as well. The Maximilian Muss rabbit hole is so deep that it's almost impossible to cover in one or two minutes. So you'll have to refer to these three videos by Penguin Zero, Turkey Tom, and Internet Ajay. And while Maximilian Muss's channel was eventually terminated as a result of his actions, his low profile doesn't quite earn him the worst reputation on YouTube. That title goes to Sky Does Minecraft, who was once the second most subscribed gaming YouTuber behind PewDiePie. His empire and reputation began to decline when he announced that he and his partner Elisa had broken up, leading Sky to have a full-blown mental breakdown on Keemstar's show Drama Alert. But this is my son! This is my legacy! This is my family! I don't know what her problem is. I don't know why she hates me so much. I did so much for her. I paid her through beauty school. I just wanted her to succeed in life. Even when she was at her lowest, I'm upset at her for continuing to ruin my life when I haven't done anything to her. I just want my son. At around the same point in time, both the popularity of Minecraft, as well as Sky's desire to create content were declining, which not only led to a drop in his channel's viewership, but this also resulted in him becoming quite depressed. I'm gonna be completely honest with you guys. I've been going through a kind of a rough time recently. I've been not the happiest that I could be. As a result of his deteriorating mental health, Sky began to develop a drug problem, eventually resulting in the collapse of his next relationship, after which the ex-partner would come out with over 6,000 words worth of the most brutal allegations in YouTube history. The document revealed that despite once being the 11th most subscribed channel on YouTube, Sky hadn't had more than $100,000 for years and would steal money from companies just to buy drugs and never do the work. The document continued by stating, you're extremely unfaithful. Alicia loved you and you would cheat, manipulate, and lie when she'd defend herself. You would constantly spread rumors of Post Malone, saying awful things about his character, which is odd because last I checked, he was checking in on you and extremely kind, was trying to help you out even, which was accompanied by countless other career-ending accusations that ultimately led Sky to disappear from the public eye altogether. Then, four months later, the Sky Does Minecraft YouTube channel was listed for sale on a third-party website, requesting a price of $900,000, providing him with the title of the worst reputation in YouTube history.